What's going on Dolphins fans? It's Connor from the Dolphins Dive and in today's video I'm going to be previewing the upcoming Miami Dolphins game against the New York Jets on Black Friday. Before I hop into today's video, I just want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving uh, and give thanks to you guys. I appreciate anybody who watches my content. It means the world to me or even if you buy a shirt from my site. Any way you support me, I appreciate it tremendously and it does not go unnoticed. So I just want to appreciate you guys and hope you guys have a great day with your families and have some fire food. Comment down below your favorite Thanksgiving food. For me, it's mashed potatoes without a doubt. But going to hop right into today's video, starting with the Dolphins offense versus the Jets defense. And this is really the tale of the tape. Uh, our strength versus their strength. Dolphins offense is first in points per game. Jets defense is 11th in points per game. Uh, and note for the, that number for the Jets, considering they're 11 in points per game with the basically the worst offense in all of football that is constantly putting the pressure on them. That's very good. We've experienced that as Dolphins fans, I think like two, three years ago, uh, during the Brian Flores era where our offense sucked, but our, do our defense was elite. Uh, and you could just see how much more pressure is put on the defense in those scenarios. Dolphins are first in passing yards per game. Jets are fifth in passing yards allowed. So once again, one of the best passing defenses in all football. Jets are second in, our Dolphins are second in rushing yards per game, and then the Jets are 30th in rushing yards allowed. So that's a clear difference, and that's my first key of the game is to run the football. There's a clear discrepancy in the Jets' pass defense versus run defense. So you got to be able to try and establish the run. What they like to do is they like to park two safeties in the back, kind of similar to the Dolphins, uh, and really just let their D-line feast but it leads them susceptible to letting up big runs. So that's where the Dolphins have to look to take advantage. Uh, Devon Achan is questionable for the game. Knowing the Dolphins and how they like to play play injuries, I'm guessing he's not going to play. So that's a bit of a hurt um, not having him. And I'm guessing it's going to be the same for Robert Hunt. McDaniel said he's going to suit up. I think it's going to be similar to what we saw from Connor Williams, uh, I think before the Chiefs game where he suited up, but he was really only going to play in case of emergency. I expect the same for Hunt, so I don't expect either of those two guys to play, which is going to hurt our rushing attack, but it's still the 30th rushing defense. I expect the Dolphins to... Actually, no, I don't know if I expect them to, but the Dolphins should commit to the run. Uh, even if they get stopped a couple of times, they need to commit to running the ball on a consistent basis because one of them are going to pop off. Like I said, 30th rushing defense. You got to commit to the run. Uh, and McDaniel has shown time and time again, he doesn't like to commit to the run as consistent as we would all like, but hopefully he does against the Jets. Also, quick side note, I'm going to this game. So uh, the post game video is gonna come out a little later. Maybe I'll try and do some content leading up. I'm not the most social person, so I don't know exactly what I'm gonna plan to do, uh, but it's a quick little side note. Hopefully Tim Boyle doesn't ruin my day. Uh, <laughs> number two, avoid self-inflicted wounds. This is a key for the Dolphins offense to have success. A lot of self-inflicted wounds. Last week it was turnovers, but most times on the road, it's been the delay games or the getting the play call in late, wasting a timeout, things like that on a consistent basis have been happening in loud road environments. Now, I don't know how loud this game's gonna be. Obviously the Jets haven't been good, so I don't know how much their fans are gonna show up. I know the MetLife takeover for the Dolphins fans is quite a prevalent thing. Like I said, I'm going. Uh, a lot of Dolphin New Jersey fans, which is a crazy combo but it's very common surprisingly um so hopefully the crowd noise isn't a factor but at the same time i kind of hope it is to just continue to get these reps in so that come playoff time the dolphins are prepared to deal with the crowd noise on offense because they have shown time and time again they have not been up to snuff now it's improved from when the bills game to the chiefs game but it's still not where it needs to be so avoid those self-inflicted wounds and then number three get waddle more involved uh there's been some clips going around questioning if he's frustrated or not. There's definitely a chance, uh, and it's a clear discrepancy. Like last year, we got Waddle involved way more often, and now Tyreek Hill's getting all the targets, which you need to give your best players the ball. Tyreek Hill's the best wide receiver in football, and he needs to get his targets. But there needs to be more Jalen Waddle action. And even when Tyreek Hill came out and Waddle stepped into that role, he was automatically then force-fed the ball. So just getting him more involved in the game plan, uh, having him as the first read guy on occasion, just to keep him more involved because he's one of the best receivers in all football. Uh, and similar to Tyreek, he can take any play to the crib. So I just think you need to keep the Penguin, Jalen Waddle more involved. Now some players to watch for the Jets defense. It's a long list because like I've mentioned, they've got a great defense. First and foremost, Quinnen Williams. 
Uh, he doesn't have the big numbers that everybody looks for, but he's one of the best defensive linemen in all football. Uh, basically requires a double team at all times in the pass or run game. He's just an overall dominant player and has the potential to take over a game. Obviously, uh, Mr. Defensive Pass Interference that doesn't get called, Sauce Gardner. He's still a good corner. DJ Reed, also a very good corner. Jermaine Johnson, their first round pick from a couple years back. From Last Chance U, which is always cool. Shout out Coach JB. Uh, he's having a solid year for himself. I think he's at six sacks. Quentin Jefferson, also an interior defensive lineman, has had solid pass rush productivity. Uh, and then their two middle linebackers have been having pretty good success in Quincy Williams and CJ Mosley. So just some names to look out for, uh, to be aware of for this upcoming game. They're all pretty solid playmakers. Now on to the Jets offense versus the Dolphins defense. And this is where the Dolphins need to really look to take advantage of the Jets. Their offense is awful. They're obviously making the quarterback change going from Zach Wilson to Tim Boyle. I honestly don't know how much of a difference it's going to make. I'm scared there's going to be that kind of interim coach effect where the team, like after a big change, the team rallies behind and just balls out for no reason. It happens. Like that's the NFL. We saw it with the Raiders. Uh, they're still playing amazing football. I mean, they, they almost beat the Dolphins. Uh, I'm scared that effect's going to happen, but I feel like the Jets' offensive issues are far beyond uh, Zach Wilson's problems. Uh, Zach Wilson obviously didn't play great, but he honestly, from what I was watching of the Jets, he wasn't playing awful. Uh, the offense just looks awful as a whole. The offensive line's completely injured and trash, uh, and they just can't get anything going. So I don't know if Tim Boyle's going to fix it. I hope not. Like I said, I'm scared he's going to ruin my day. Uh, I will hate if I go to this game and they lose. So Jets offense is 30th in points per game. Dolphins defense is 23rd. Just a quick little side note, Dolphins defense trajectory though is on an up and up. They're finally healthy and in the healthy games, they've been fucking dominant in the past two games against the Chiefs and Raiders. Jets are 30th in passing yards per game. Dolphins are 14th in passing yards allowed. Jets are 23rd in rushing yards per game. Dolphins are 10th in rushing yards allowed. So Dolphins win in all of those categories. And like I said, the Dolphins are on a huge upward trajectory and I expect that to continue through the rest of the regular season. So very happy about that. We saw it last week. I think our defense was probably responsible for seven points. Um, I think two of the field goals came off of turnovers in that area already. So I'm loving what I'm seeing from the defense, the pass rush, the coverage. Jalen Ramsey's an elite cornerback. So really loving what I've seen from the defense. Just need to continue to see that uh, and that continued growth, which is one of the keys of the game is just to continue to do what you do in terms of the scheme is being run at a proper rate, in my opinion. Uh, I would maybe implore, and once again, I'm stupid. Vic Fangio is a wizard defensively, but I kind of, you saw it towards the end of the Raiders game where like, it was like, fuck, the game's on the line. We're sure send more exotic stuff. I'd like to see that on a more consistent rate. Uh, and that obviously makes you have to get into those second and third and long situations where it's obvious passing downs, where you can play those mind games where you're showing blitz, you don't necessarily send it, or you show blitz and you send a, a, a big blitz with a good coverage behind it. I would just like to see more unique stuff like that, but it's known for Fangio to kind of just play pretty, make you beat him. He's going to play too high, not give up big plays, and that's good. So continue to do what you do, Vic Fangio. Uh, it's obviously working, uh, but the big key for me is to stop the run. This offense is shit, um, so if you can't just let them hand the ball to Brees Hall and let him take over the game because he can because he's that talented, I really think that's the only way this offense has great success against us they're obviously going to make plays that's just the nfl but i mean they're just when you watch the offense like i said i don't even i don't think it's a zach wilson issue it's not like any, people are flying open and he's just missing people it's, it's just for, it starts in the offensive line and it's just not good so don't let them get the ground game going because it'll make their lives easier so just don't let that happen players to watch for the jets offense simply Brees hall and garrett wilson both of those guys are studs garrett wilson's an up-and-coming one of the best receivers in football uh, obviously, the quarterback play and offensive line play have not allowed him to flourish, but um, once that's <laughs> set in line, I think Garrett Wilson will be a stud. And then Brees Hall, obviously, we've seen it before when he, we've played him. He's just extremely explosive, one of the best running backs in all football, and a great young talent. So have to keep an eye out for those two guys. But it's time for the prediction. Before I give mine, comment yours down below. I'm 7-3 and three on the season, as the Dolphins are also 7-3. and three. I may or may not be a homer and have predicted them to win every game. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> can't help it but i'm not going to change up this week i have the dolphins winning 31 to 13 
I just changed up my prediction that I've written down here. I was just like, ah, I want Dolphins to get more points. So 31-13 is my prediction. My initial prediction was 24-10, which I think is a little more realistic. Uh, so that'll be having the Dolphins move to 8-3 and three on the season. Like I said, comment down below. Appreciate you guys for watching. I hope you guys had an amazing Thanksgiving. And until next time, I'll catch y'all.